I just find plants amazing. They're the fundamental basis of most life on Earth. Today I'm talking to Joshua Stiles. Joshua is a conservation ecologist, or as he says himself, a plant obsessive. His passion for plants is irresistible, and his work since gaining his first class degree in 2017 includes founding and coordinating the Northwest Rare Plants Initiative in the UK. He's dedicated to protecting and reintroducing rare species and is working at present with the endangered Great Sundew, an exotic carnivorous peatland plant. Apart from his skills and achievements, Joshua is a wonderful, engaging human being who is guaranteed to pull you along in the slipstream of his obsession. If I was a TV producer, I would sign him up immediately as the David Attenborough of the plant kingdom. Check him out on YouTube or connect with him on LinkedIn. Welcome, Joshua Stiles. So hi, Joshua, how are you doing? Um, Hello, I'm doing really well, thank you, are you? Good, very good. How are you doing with the coronavirus lockdown? And we're speaking to you in Southport today in the UK. Yes, you are, yeah. Um, I'm doing reasonably well, actually. Um, I'm still doing odd bits of work, so I'm still able to sort of get out and about. Um, yeah, yeah, so okay, okay. <laughs> good, good. Do you have some projects nearby or are you allowed to go and visit projects or how's that going? Um, well, I'm based sort of all across the region, but with uh, I've a couple of jobs actually with with my consultancy job and a conservation job i visit sites sort of everywhere yeah all in line with guidance of course i'm sure you're social distancing from all the plants so um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i first heard of josh uh, with i think it was the guardian video that you did oh, okay um, which were it was an article in the guardian and they did a video which i just shared on our facebook page at foreign nature sanctuary as well which is was so inspiring and you were talking about conservation and your projects and saving different plants in the bog like the white beak sedge yeah one of them uh -huh. um, that's right and I, I really recommend everyone to watch that video so I'm going to just talk to Joshua about how he became uh, a nature lover or how did you become an advocate for nature um well I prefer to think of myself more as an obsessive really <laughs> um I I love wildlife in general particularly including plants um but I, I started getting interested when I was sort of six or seven years old my mum really was really kind and let me use the whole of the back garden to grow like fruit and veg uh, then one year I remember watching Monty Don on Gardener's World and he encouraged people to grow wildflowers and so I did, um, and I, I just distinctly, really vividly remember sitting down just for hours watching swarms of solitary bees and butterflies and so much stuff um, congregate around this teeny tiny wildflower patch. Um, and then after that, I dug up all of my fruit and veg and chucked them all in the bin and replaced everything with um, native wildflowers. And um, it sort of started there, really. Yeah. Oh, that is absolutely magical. Well, we have a collection of Burren wildflowers, native plants here. And we're linked up with the seed bank in the National Botanic Gardens uh, as a resource for seed collecting. But our aim really would be to have a nursery for the native plants areas that might be damaged that we could replace so we have a small collection and we're building on that so that's wonderful and I think there is a term called plant blindness which I'm sure you're very aware of it's very easy to get people to adopt a panda or you know look at a fox because of the furry lovely cutesy animal but mm -hmm. do you have any ideas of how to get people to really stop and look at a plant or tackle this issue of plant blindness okay um well I absolutely know what plant blindness is because most people I meet 
are um, suffer from it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, however, I just find plants amazing. They're the fundamental basis of most life on Earth. And the, the number of interactions between plants and everything else is, I just find them incredible. And although you're, you're totally right that people find foxes and mammals and etc more appealing than plants generally, I tend to think that's just because the interest around plants isn't always obvious. For example, um, I grow a, a beautiful plant called lesser bladderwort. Now, lesser bladderwort, it looks like this little strandy aquatic plant. It, it isn't immediately interesting. But when you look close, it has these fantastic bladder-like structures. And these are little traps that the plant uses to capture invertebrates. And then suddenly the plant becomes a lot more interesting when you find out that actually bladderworts are the fastest plants on Earth. These little traps can capture animals in one ten thousandth of a second. Oh my goodness. And then they'll become they'll become even more interesting when you find out that one little strandy plant can uh, consume tens of thousands of animals every year. The more you know about plants, the more fascinating they are. And yeah. um, I think they're amazing. So. Oh, that's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Um, and that's a bog plant, isn't it? It primarily grows on peatlands, yes. Yes, yeah. on peatlands. So we have a lot of peatlands in Ireland and there is work now to conserve the peatlands because obviously traditionally um, they were used for cutting turf, for fuel, for the fire and things like that. So can you tell us why, in your opinion, it's, it's important to conserve the bogs and the peatlands? It's massively important. Um, I look at Ireland which has a lot more active peat bogs than here in England, and think it is such a massive, massive pity that all of your bogs are getting decimated. Here in England, we've lost over 94% um, of our peatlands just to agriculture and things like that. Um, and looking at the damage, all of these fantastic internationally rare habitats are gone. Charismatic species like the bladderwort or like great sundew or bog rosemary and all of their associated species, they're just gone. And of course, the problem with that is that plants are the fundamental basis of all life on Earth. Um, but also, when we get rid of these very special habitats, we're also losing any potential value to us. Like a lot of the smut fungi, for example, have pharmaceutical potential. And we're just getting rid of all of that. Um, it's a tremendous shame, and it will only be to our own detriment as well, that we're losing all this fantastic, um, very, very rare um, biodiversity. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for voicing that so well, because I think it's very important to talk about it and to keep mm -hmm. telling people why it's important, because um, mm -hmm. it might not be that clear to people who haven't thought about it before, really. I think you might have already spoken about your favourite plant. I admire all plants, of course, but um, particularly all of our native species. Um, at the moment, I, I really love great sundew. Um, oh, and tell us a little bit about eggs. that. Great, okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's a widespread species in Ireland and, and at the moment, and Scotland. Um, however, as I said uh, before, the state of England's peatlands um, is quite drastically... Uh, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> um, and because it's so bad, we have less than 20 sites left now for Great Sundew, um, which is very sad. Um, it's a carnivorous plant. It's, our, it's the largest of our three sundew species. And it's just beautiful. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I'll push um, some pictures up. Um, okay on the Facebook page and Instagram and we can get people talking about it. Your work focuses on rare and endangered plant species such as the great sundew. 
and white beak sedge. Can you explain to us why these plants are so important for biodiversity? So the white beak sedge is um, part of the ecosystem. It is. Explain that to us a little bit. Sure. I mean, um, sticking on to peatland, sticking to peatland plants <laughs> again, but white beak sedge, people might see it and think it's such an unassuming little plant, but they don't, they might not necessarily appreciate that. Hang on a second. It's one of the listed food plants for the large heath butterfly. It's also got a few smut fungi that are reliant upon it. And so um, you, you find out about all these connections and um, suddenly the plant just becomes more fantastic and, and magical. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> and why the plants are really the important parts of the ecosystem. They might not be the thing that you see, like the big panda with the lovely big eyes, but mm. they're just as important. Could you suggest any positive actions that individuals might be able to take to support nature at the moment? Yeah, lots. Okay. Um, the, the, <laughs> the, um, the, the first thing that everyone can do, a lot of people own houses with gardens. I've dedicated my whole garden to wildlife. I grow lots of, of plants, um, rare species intended for reintroduction. However, what I've also done is I only mow my lawn once a year and it's turned into this superb wildflower meadow that's swarming with with wildlife. So that's one thing you could do. You could dedicate parts of or your entire garden to, to wildlife. And um, another thing that's obvious to me is donate to your local wildlife trust. Move with your wallet, volunteer for them, which both of those things can make fantastic differences. And yes. those are just a few things off the top of my head. That I yeah, that's say. how you can make an impact. And mm. you're making such an impact by speaking and, you know, dedicating your life to this. So thank you very much for that. At the Borough Nature Sanctuary, we have a wildflower meadow. Uh, which is 15 acres. So we graze it very, very tightly from the end of September until the beginning of March. And then all the animals are removed from the meadow and it's yep. allowed to flower. And then the hay is cut at the very late, the latest cut at the end of September. And because the farm never had any pesticides, it's organic for 30 right. years. Um, the wildflower meadow is spectacular. So if you have a larger area of land, if you're a farmer, maybe you could dedicate um, one field and just conserve it in this way. Take the animals off while, the, while it's flowering and put them back on uh, mm. in October. So that's one suggestion. Do you have any nature books that inspire you that you'd like to recommend to our listeners? Ooh. Um... Sure. I oh, I've recently actually got rid of one of my favourite books. Um, it's one of my favourites as a as a child. Anyway, it's the Collins Photographic Wildflower Guide, and um, it's a beautiful book with loads of amazing photos of of wild plants in it. And I just used to read it every day. It's fantastic. So that's, that's one that I'd recommend. Yeah, that's, that's a really good recommendation. Um, do you have any exciting conservation projects on at the moment or in the future that you're looking forward to? Just a bit of background. I graduated from university in 2017 and I was really, really lucky to come across a scholarship with some money. Um, £2,000 actually, which I may as well have been a millionaire um, at, at that time. Um, and so I, I decided to spend this money on um, conserving some of the rarest species, plant species in the region. And so what I do now, um, following on from that, is I'm project coordinator of a conservation program called the Northwest Rare Plants Initiative. And so with this program, I do a fair few plant reintroductions, um, particularly of peatland species like 
the white beaks hedge that you mentioned earlier um, and things like the great sundew and lesser bladderwort. And so what I'll be doing in the next month or so is reintroducing the spectacular uh, great sundew back to a, a, a couple of sites in Cheshire. Um, and I'm really excited about that. It's an that's endangered wonderful. species in England. So, um, it's an endangered species. So that, in that England, it is, yeah. Yeah, that mm. is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's absolutely fabulous talking to you. And it's so nice to hear a young voice um, for nature, which is great. And you've got plenty of time ahead of you <laughs> to do all these things. <laughs> so thanks for that. And we'd love to have you over here at some stage looking around the borough and show mm. you around. And um, if you had a magic wand... What one thing would you do for nature today if you could change something or for the planet? Ooh, <sighs> well, um, I'd probably do a few things. Um, Go for it. <laughs> it may sound a little bit severe, but I'd probably um, wave my magic wand to stop people having more than two kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's might be a bit controversial, but no one talks about overpopulation. Not many people talk about it. Um, yeah, yeah. We're in a massive biodiversity crisis at the moment. It is a tricky one to talk about. So I know Jonathan Pirat, yes. who is one of the interviews on Nature Magic, speaks about overpopulation as well. So that's mm. number one. What else? <laughs> I would probably wave my magic wand, I don't know, to make people want to conserve things i'd want to wave my magic wand to make people want to become more educated about the things moving around in their gardens and, and in their locality yeah, yeah. Do well, I think like you're, you're doing that you don't need a, a magic wand to do that <laughs> i mean it really it is all about engaging people mm. and until they can see and hear about the details of plants mm. and go out into nature um, mm. and engage with nature. They can't love nature and want, wish to conserve it. Any other wishes? Oh, not off the top of my head. I wish that there weren't endangered species in the world. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely lovely. So <laughs> it's really, really kind of Joshua to speak to us today. So where can we find out about everything you're doing? My project is called the Northwest Rare Plant Initiative. So uh, I do have my own website if anyone wants to check out a bit more about it. What's the website address and people can have a look? Sure. Um, so it's www.nwrpi.weebly.com, I believe. Great. So I'll put websites and links in the show notes if anybody Super. wants to have a look at them. And thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, it was inspiring and magical. 